Hey, what's up everyone? Bennett Profixer, and today on the bench, I have an iPhone 11 Pro Max. A, a few videos ago, we did an iPhone 11, which is the LCD version of the new 11 series. This one is the largest OLED version. It's the Apple flagship device. And this one actually has a cracked back, which we're not gonna be repairing, but we're gonna be putting a new screen on the front. It actually does have a little bit of separation in the frame itself. We discussed this with the customer and they're okay with seeing how a new um, screen sits and to see if they can um, you know, make do with, with what they got here. Um, so we're gonna be digging into this. I'm gonna walk you through every single step that I'm going to take in order to repair um, this 11 Pro Max. And this is actually the first time that I've been inside of one of these devices. So you'll see it first time you know, alongside me. Uh, everything on my workbench I've linked up in the description below. So be sure to check that out and as well, don't forget to subscribe and also like this video. Without further ado, let's get started on this iPhone 11 Pro Max. The first thing I do when working on any device is I use my blue heat mat. Uh, before this video started, I had this device sitting on the blue heat mat, um, actually uh, warming up, and both sides are actually warm to the touch. We have it set to 60 degrees, which is a really good temperature for prolonged use. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take out the two Penelope screws in the bottom. And that's pretty standard for any iPhone um, ever since the beginning. And we'll go ahead and remove these with a Pentalobe screwdriver. Uh, the screwdrivers that I'm using in this video, uh, you'll find a link for those in the description below. I picked them up from Injured Gadgets, and these are actually a brand called Tool. It's a uh, 2 UUL, and which is pretty interesting. Um, but they're extremely awesome screwdrivers. I generally use uh, we have screwdrivers, which I really, really like. However, um, I hate to say it, but these tools do have uh, better bits than the we has, it seems. Um, but digging into this particular device and opening up the screen, we want to use a flat razor. I mean, all my videos and for most of the phones that I um, open up, I use a flat razor. And the reason for that is the razor is so sharp that it's going to slip in between the bezel and the back housing and not leave any kind of markings. If you use anything bigger like an Isesimo um, or something like that, it may leave markings um, because they're just a little bit too thick and they don't really slip in. So what we're going to do is we take one of these uh, razors and we're going to insert it into the side of the screen. And working it down until you feel it hit the bottom of the housing, you want to tip it up, which will lift the screen out ever so slightly. Kind of work down the side. You don't want to pry or muscle the screen off, um, you know, right from just one corner. So just kind of work up the side and you'll be opening it up at a millimeter or two. And as you can tell, this screen is very damaged. And so uh, there's no fear of uh, causing any kind of damage here, but I'm still very careful despite having a totally wrecked display. Now we're going to work along the edges and lift the rest of it out, making sure that your razor doesn't slip into the actual device itself. There we go. And realistically, this is just really uh, just about manipulating the adhesive and the bezel to uh, lift out the screen without uh, causing any kind of damage. Got a little bit of glass in my finger there from the back. And now we're going to work on the bottom. Uh, but like I said earlier, just kind of take it slow. You know, don't try to, you know, twist or muscle the screen off. We're going to get an amber alert going on the phone. And now to work around all the edges, you'll notice that the screen is just about ready to come off. So this one here is ready to open. And just like any of the other iPhone 10s, iPhone 11s, they're gonna open up from the side. Now this is a new design that they started with like the iPhone 7 series, um, but with any of them that have Face ID, they all open up from the side the same. And they all look pretty, pretty similar inside as well. You'll probably have a bunch of um, little webs of adhesive. Go ahead and pull those off. With a phone this new, the adhesive will be extremely strong and easy to pull off. Um, Use that to your advantage because you want to pull all of these adhesives off in one piece and you don't want to have to scrape it off with any kind of razor or anything like that. Now it's going to make it a little bit easier for you. Uh, so what we'll do here is, I've never actually opened one of these up, I've never actually seen a, a tutorial on this. So um, we're going to now just start removing some of these brackets here. The most obvious ones will be where the screen connects. So ensuring that I keep all of these screws all in the right spots be very careful here. 
and put them into my work mat, which has these little individual uh, spots to hold screws to keep them all separate. And we're just going to go down this whole thing and start pulling all these out. So pretty easy process. And I believe now this bracket should be loose. I want to go ahead and inspect this and kind of see where the battery may connect, which I believe the battery is going to be connecting through this bottom one here. So I don't want to unplug anything just yet. Now I'm going to check underneath here and see if that's where the battery connects. Kind of going a little bit of uh, an exploration here. <laughs> so here we go. which that does look like it is the battery. So we're going to go ahead and unplug that there. And we'll be able to tell if the screen turns off, if it actually is a battery. And there we go. The screen turned off, so we're good. Um, go ahead and remove the rest of these connectors here. Be very careful, just like with any of the other uh, models. I use my fingernail. I don't use really any kind of pry tools. I don't like to use pry tools unless I absolutely have to. I don't want to put any kind of marks or damage any of the components on the motherboard itself. And fingernails seem to be a little more forgiving than some of the other tools that people use. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to turn on our heat mat. It actually turned off earlier because we're, we've been um, recording a series of videos today. Um, and it had been on for over an hour. So, um, taking this one here, we've cleaned up all the adhesive um, around the edges. And inspecting this top piece, it does look like it is uh, pretty split up in the top. Now, the customer actually said it was it fell on the ground and then was stepped on. And so um, it looks like a rock had you know been pushed up into the back. Um, but we're going to test that and make sure everything functions just fine. Um, but all the adhesive is gone. Um, so as we um, wait for the screen to heat up, we're going to go ahead and apply our our um, adhesive that goes right around the edges. This will be extremely important, especially in a case like this one, where the housing is just a little bit bent. And generally, you know, we, uh, we try to avoid installing any kind of screens instead of housings that are bent. Uh, the reason for that is, you know, they don't necessarily seem to sit that well. However, the customer is between a rock and a hard place with this one because they went to Apple and they were essentially going to have to purchase a new device. They had no Apple Care, and they were told that uh, there was no repairs available since it was so catastrophically damaged. And in this situation, so we're just going to go ahead and do a repair on it, and, um, and they're going to have to make do. So they're going to put it into a case and uh, use it that way. So at the top, the uh, bezel actually does stick out a little bit, preventing our gasket from sticking, but that's okay. All the rest of it looks like it's sticking rather well and it looks like it's ready to go. So this one here um, is a little bit separated there at the top, uh, but that should be no big deal. Um, you can tell it's kind of sticking out a little bit, but that's will be all right. I'm gonna place that off to the side. Now we're gonna move our blue heat mat over here so we can start removing some of the front face ID sensors. Uh, it's gonna be this longer cable that goes up the device. And we're gonna go ahead and take what looks to be a Phillips screw. And we're going to remove that. And the last one over here does look like it is a pentalobe, or I mean a tri-wing. I'm going to tilt this back just a little bit and flip it over just like all the other um, front face ID sensors. And we're going to take a little bit of alcohol and drip it in the front. Um, to help release these from their brackets. Taking our tweezers, going to lift up on these sensors here. And realistically, you don't want to pry these out. You just want to kind of, you know, work on them just a little bit, and it will kind of massage them loose and allow that adhesive to, or allow the alcohol to take effect on the adhesive and allow it to release from the device. I'm going to pull our front microphone off like always. Since the screen is so hot, that should come out no problem. And now we're going to want to set this very delicate front face ID sensor off to the side. We're going to remove this whole heat mat over because we won't actually need it for the rest of the repair. Taking our new front screen, 
We're going to want to orient it exactly the same way so we can ensure that we're putting all of our screws back in the right spots. And we're going to go ahead and pull off the rest of this here. There we go. Some little uh, protective covers that come already on top of the uh, thermal dissipation heat sticker. Now we're going to go ahead and place this in there very delicately. I want to make sure that we line it up and that we don't pinch any of these connectors because um, we don't want to cause any kind of damage to them. If you cause damage to these, then there is no way that you can um, replace certain ones of these and it's pretty difficult um, to replace most any of these sensors and it's always the best idea to always avoid it if possible so definitely be very careful with this process. We're going to go here and we're going to take out the, or we're going to insert the two screws. And then our tri-wing we are going to insert as well. All right, perfect. I want to take a look at the front of this, make sure it's all sitting flush, which if we look at the top of the display here, it looks like everything is sitting completely flush, flush as it should, and that the front of, um, or the back side here with the speaker is sitting um, perfectly as well. And this is one of those things that you don't want to get it misaligned, especially in this particular case where we have kind of a bent housing. I want to be pretty careful. Uh, but everything looks like it's all lined up perfectly. Now we're going to go ahead and plug this in, make sure Face ID sensors are plugged in, and power the device on and see what we get. So we're going to go ahead and plug in our screen. We're going to plug in our Face ID sensor. These cables are pretty thin, um, which is nice compared to like the iPhone 10. They're extremely long. The 10 are a little bit shorter, um, but these look like they are definitely much shorter on the 11 Pro Max, which makes it nice because I imagine once we, once we close this up, you won't have to worry about any kind of excess cables sticking out. So we're going to flip this down here and we're going to hold down on our power button and see what we get. So there we go, it is powering on, so we're gonna wait for that to power on, and then we're gonna do a very simple test on it. All right, now that the device is powered up, we do see one of the messages that is new to the Apple line of error messages that they really like to give. Um, so on any type of 11, if you do put a new screen on it, and it does recognize that it has a different IC than the original screen shipped with, it will give you a, what they call an important display message. Um, it's really not important at all. It's a pretty much a bogus message um, because if you take one of these devices and you uh, take a, if you take two of these devices, OEM from the factory and swap their screens, it's still gonna give you the same message. Um, however, on this particular message, um, it will stay in the settings and definitely it will stay on the lock screen for a few days. Uh, but other than that, it's really just a harmless message. We're going to test the screen, make sure all the touch is working. If you uh, grab a, that display message, you can you know, drag it over and then do a couple squares on the screen, do a couple diagonals as well, and make sure that the message follows your finger the whole time. Uh, that can also help you to ensure that all the touch is working. Now that all the touch you know, appears to be working, we're going to go ahead and put all the rest of the plates on this device. You know, Just like all the rest of them, you can use like a canned air, or if you have any kind of fancy stand, you can use that too. So we're gonna flip this over, uh, being very careful of our display cables to make sure that they don't come out. And we're gonna start putting in these little brackets. We're gonna put in the battery bracket first. And, you know, just like uh, before, we're going to go ahead and do like one little screw or one little rotation on the screw um, and that makes sure that your bracket is lined up square. 
Um, one thing to note with this particular one, whenever we booted it up, we didn't get any kind of face ID errors, which is very interesting seeing that there was so much damage in the front. Um, I was expecting that there was going to be some other issues going on with the device, which we will do a full test, uh, doing our full, our full two-tech check between two different technicians here in our store um, to test about 26 different uh, functions. Um, but right now, for the purpose of this video, we're going to go ahead and put this one all together, and then we're going to do the testing later. But everything appears like it's working fine, which is pretty awesome and exciting seeing that uh, this one had pretty catastrophic damage. So um, with any of the devices here, you want to make sure that you're putting these screws back in the right spots. Um, I use this blue heat mat, picked it up from Injured Gadgets, and it has been serving us well. Um, truthfully, with all the cubbies and things like that, I didn't think I would like it at first, uh, but it actually does come in handy because you can put screws all in these little squares, which helps to keep them aligned properly. And we are almost done putting our screws in here. And then we'll be ready to remove the backing from our adhesive. Just checking all these screws to make sure that they're all fully tight before we close this one up. Alright, cool. So now this next part that you want to do is you want to go ahead and take your um, adhesive off of, or your adhesive backing off. Pretty easy process. Here at the top it's really not sticking that well, so we're going to see if we can work from the bottom and work around the edges. There we go. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and work from this back side over here. And pull that blue one off. So now that all of these have been taken off, just like any of our other screen repairs, we want to insert the screen using two fingers here at the top to make sure that it's sitting flush as it should, making sure that the cameras are seated properly. And once they are, we then focus on the side to ensure that no flex cables are being pinched. And like I mentioned before in this 11 Pro Max, the cables are extremely thin and small, and so um, it doesn't look like they're getting close to the edge at all. So now we're going to go ahead and pinch the bottom in and run up the side. Same with this other side over here, ensuring that the top is in place. Pinch the bottom in and run it up the side. And then look around the edges, and everything is sitting very flush. The only thing that isn't is this little notch in the screen where it was uh, crushed and tipped up, um, but it all looks like it's functioning or it's like it's sitting properly. I'm going to go ahead and take these uh, penelope screws and we're going to insert them into the bottom of the phone. And whenever you're inserting your penelopes, make sure you apply quite a bit of inward pressure from the screwdriver itself. You don't want to strip these screws because they're very easy to strip. Um, but also use a good screwdriver like the Tool or the Weha screwdriver, um, like I showed in the video. And they bite very well into the top of the screw head. So uh, that will definitely make it a little bit easier for you. Um, but now we have an iPhone 11 Pro Max that we do need to do a little bit more testing on it. But as far as the touch, um, it looks like everything's functioning well and it didn't give us any kind of face ID um, errors, um, which is pretty cool considering the absolute catastrophic damage to this one here. I appreciate y'all watching the video and I hope that you can take some of these tips and tricks and apply them to your next iPhone 11 Pro Max repair. Everything that you see in this video is linked up in the description below. So be sure to check all of that out. And as well, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Appreciate y'all following along. I'll catch you on the next video. See y'all later.